what is up guys welcome back to the channel and welcome to a brand new video so today you join me once again inside the polo 6c gti and we're going to be discussing a very interesting topic now this car has recently been booked in for a mechatronic replacement so it's having an issue with the mechatronic and i just thought i should chat to you guys about issues relating to to this dq200 platform gearbox so we're going to be talking about some of the common failures uh the symptoms and the costs that go into replacing one of these so i really do hope you guys enjoy this video let's get right into it so here it is then so some of the names that are used to refer to this platform include dq200 0 am 0 cw and so on now the dq200 gearbox model uh, is featured on cars with less than two liters of engine capacity so uh, the 1.8 liter motor which is this one that you find in the 6c polo gti the 1.4 a liter motor that you find in stuff like the golf uh, tsi uh, the 1.2 liter in the polos and so on and so on now there are some common faults uh, that happen on this particular uh, gearbox so it's a seven speed dual clutch dry sump uh, transmission so some of the common faults include uh, mechatronic failures uh, reverse selector failure and uh, clutch wear and wear and tear basically there are some more uh, less common features like uh, uh, the bearing failures and so on and so on but i'll touch into the main common major ones so let's get into those okay problem number one has to do with the mechatronic now the mechatronic looks like this now the mechatronic helps regulate clutch actuation and the selection of gears on the gearbox now there are certain design flaws on the mechatronic itself that can cause some major problems to okay or that can cause the mechatronic to fail for one the valve housing can have some walls which are pretty thin and due to buildup of high pressure from the hydraulic system within the mechatronic itself uh, the walls can crack and fail and some of the symptoms of this problem include harsh gear changes uh, loss of drive or the car actually not going into gear there's more uh, symptoms but those are some of the most common ones now uh, in terms of solving this issue uh, you may well the mechatronic might need replacing altogether or it can be rebuilt in some way or form now these are very very expensive components and they are very complex and very important parts of the gearbox so yeah when looking into this problem there's also some secondhand parties that actually build custom mechatronics which may also be more durable than the oem ones so do look into some companies or guys that actually produce their own mechatronics which may be better so these issues actually require a lot of research and a lot of uh, in-depth look into them so you can understand uh, what's actually going on to avoid spending for unnecessary situations but let's get into problem number two second common problem is the failure of the reverse selector now the reverse selector normally actuates uh, vertically uh, but when it fails it can start moving around or wandering about uh, transversely which yeah is a very big problem now the common symptom of this problem is the car not going into reverse gear or not being able to select sixth gear now this problem is often confused with mechatronic failures now these are two separate uh, problems the mechatronic can fail alone and the reverse selector can also fail alone they're two separate problems so hence i said earlier it's very important to research into these things so that you fully understand what the actual issue with the gearbox is to avoid overspending when uh, repairing uh, the car so these issues are also associated with certain fault lights that will pop up onto the dashboard when they are occurring now some of the fault lights include uh, a pnds which is the gear selector actuation uh, lights or patterns uh, they can pop up on the dashboard alongside uh, e, an engine light fault uh, there is also a fault which can often read uh, leave car in position p uh, or visit workshop immediately so th there's a lot of uh, 
lights that can pop up on the dash when these problems are actually occurring. Let's get into problem number three. So the third and last common problem is clutch wear and tear. Now with this problem, it involves the clutch wearing down and not being suitable to run anymore. Now the car is a double clutch, so there's two clutch packs on the car. So often there's a light that will pop up, which will say uh, clutch one slash two, since there's two of them has reached its maximum tolerance, something like that. So that's a light that pops up uh, with regard to this problem. Now, some of the symptoms of this problem also include harsh gear changes, uh, clutch slippage. So the car, I mean, the gearbox is struggling to transmit power from the engine to the drive shaft. So the car will have some kind of over rev uh, effect while you're trying to drive that's actually when the clutch or the clutches are slipping so that's the third and common problem so let's look at some of the costs that involve solving these problems now as you can imagine these are very essential components of the engine let alone the gearbox so they are very expensive to repay now this car like i said has been booked in for a mechatronic replacement so the car went in firstly for inspection and they found that uh, the mechatronic has actually worn and needs replacing now the mechatronic itself costs about 45 grand that is the most expensive part of this repay obviously now labor is also quite expensive at around five grand six grand now in total in order to replace the mechatronic on this car you're looking at about just over 50 grand now 45 grand for the mechatronic and around six grand for the labor which is yeah it's insane uh, actually the amount is slightly more than that because they also charge you for inspection now to inspect the vehicle it costs about 1400 rands so yeah not really pretty now we've not only discussed issues of the mechatronic we've also discussed issues with the reverse gear selector uh, clutch wear and tear now you can imagine if you have all of these things combined together i can't even think of what the amount will be to replace all those things all together but like i said do look into the issues properly to nail down what the actual problem is to avoid overspending like i said once again there are companies in germany in the u.s that make third uh, third party uh, components for the engine for the gearbox for this platform which can be more durable than actually the OEM ones so do look into those search on YouTube search on Google you'll definitely found guys who can like build proper proper components for this uh, platform so yeah pretty expensive so I'll also update you guys on uh, the car once it's been sorted and ready to run once again oh by the way down in the description below i'll include a link to uh, a website or an article uh which uh, breaks down all the problems on these uh on the gearbox model and they do a proper thorough breakdown of all the problems they also show you the components they break down the uh the symptoms uh the fault lights uh, the pricing and they also include all pretty much all the cars that can experience these problems better than I can explain everything so do check out the article and you'll be definitely well informed now I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video until next time that's cheers from me